let's talk about somebody who's not going to play for their first year or second year, barring an injury to one of the greatest of all time. Jordan Love gets drafted to the Green Bay Packers. Ty Schmidt's very happy that we're continuing to talk about this <laughs> weeks later. They chose not to make their team better for the immediate future in the first round, even trading up to do so. If you're Aaron Rodgers, what's the mindset going into this year that you were one game away from the Super Bowl last year? You were an NFL quarterback for a long, long time. There are things that come with being an NFL quarterback for a long, long time brain uh, uh activity moods things of that nature how you view yourself because how you have to view yourself if you're aaron Rodgers in that situation how are you feeling i hate it i hate it it's awful it's, it was a bad move and i don't even care if jordan love becomes a great quarterback it's still a bad move um, this is different to me than when the packers drafted aaron Rodgers. they had brett Favre as their quarterback and aaron Rodgers fell to them in the draft like they were sitting there at 24 25 whatever it was and they were like well shoot i mean they just caught him they just caught him unlike aguilar <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean they just caught him as he was falling there that was mean of you but listen aguilar is going to invite you to an eagles game now but listen here's what happened <laughs> this time they <laughs> traded up to get jordan love and i just don't understand it i if i'm if I'm Aaron Rodgers, here's what I think will happen. Aaron Rodgers will say all the right things. He will do all the right things. He'll be at the top of mountains being like, yo, relax, chill out, have fun. We're good. However, I am sure he's pissed. I am sure he's angry. And I'm sure, just like you said, he was like, wait a second. You could have used a first rounder to help us go win it all. Instead, you did something very different. And, uh, you know, I'll let other people say it because it's that obvious. Have you ever had any beef with like a coach? And how does this, because the starting quarterback and the coach literally have to be on the same page. I, I mean, now granted, it's turned out that Bill Belichick and Tom Brady have uh, had enough each other at the end. I think that was apparent coming. But Tom Brady was always willing to take less money because Bill Belichick and he had a conversation, which made the entire team be able to do that. So I think Bill and Tom were always on the same page until they weren't and then he left. It's like quarterback and head coach have to be tied at the hip almost. It, it's like something that has to happen because you're the two leaders of the team. What do you think with LaFleur and Rodgers, how that's going to kind of work, I guess? Yeah, I, I believe they're going to have good communication. I mean, on a much, much smaller scale, my last year in Seattle, I was in Seattle 10 years. Pete Carroll's the head coach. He calls me outside uh, right on the lake on Lake Washington there, and he's like, hey, let's play a, a game of one-on-one uh, -on -one hoops. Pete Carroll's all about competition. He's got a basketball hoop out there. And over a game of hoops, he tells me basically that they're going to give up. I think it was a third round pick and they're trading for Charlie Whitehurst. Uh, and I was quite honestly, I was like a little upset about it. Right. So he was like, you know, here's our, 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 our plan was to draft Golden Tate. And then I think another wide receiver, maybe Eric Decker or somebody like that. Uh, but instead, we got Golden Tate and Charlie Whitehurst. And, and he was like, hey, you know, competition will bring out the best in everybody. It's okay. And what I tried to say to him at the time was like, listen, it's nothing against Charlie Whitehurst. And it's not that I'm like disinterested in having competition. I'm all for that. But similar to when Steve Young was on the 49ers and the 49ers used a first round pick to draft Jim Druckenmiller out of Virginia Tech. <laughs> like it wasn't that Steve Young was upset with the competition opportunity with Jim Druckenmiller. It just was that, hey, listen, you could have gotten us a guard or an extra defensive back or a wide receiver. And I, I believe it's that's the mindset that you see that Aaron Rodgers probably has right now. Maybe even what you saw out of Ben Roethlisberger when they drafted Mason Rudolph. Like, hey, listen, I'm not going to play forever. I'm closer to the end of my career than I am to the beginning. Let's go get pieces that can help us win now. Let's go get weapons. I will do the part. I will do the job at the quarterback spot. But, you know, again, this is the NFL. And sometimes even great players are reminded of the fact that the team is thinking about life after them. Clipboard Jesus is a cool dude, too. <laughs> He is. Yeah, you know, he's a great guy. He's a cool guy. It was... He and I started sharing stories with each other one night whenever we both had a uh, couple beverages, and it was a legendary evening. But I could see how you would feel the way you feel. Did you beat Pete Carroll in that one-on-one -on -one game? And is that why he – did he beat you? You know what? I don't remember. But oh. if, if, no, but listen, even if, uh, even if I beat him, which I don't even know if I did, uh, he played the entire game in flip-flops. As I think at the time, the second oldest coach in the NFL. So he's a, he's actually a phenomenal athlete, great competitor, and a uh, pretty good hooper. Imagine if he beat you in flip flops while telling you he was drafting your place. <laughs> <laughs> Insult to injury, right? That's a tough. That is a tough go of it.